In this video, we're going to learn about accumulation functions. Now, these are also called integral functions, and some people call them indefinite integrals, although other people use the word indefinite integrals to mean something different. So let's skip that one. Accumulation functions or integral, fun integral functions. So let's start with, a, with a, a problem. Suppose that you're driving down the road and you start driving at one o'clock in the afternoon and your, your velocity, or actually your speed, is a function v of t, where t is time. If you want to know how far you traveled by 2 o'clock, well, that's the integral of your speed with respect to time from 1 to 2. You could also write it as the integral of v of s ds, or v of q dq, or v of w dw. It doesn't matter what the variable is called, because you're, what you're doing is you're adding up the contributions of all the values of t from 1 to 2, or if you prefer, all the values of s from 1 to 2. The name of the variable doesn't matter. What matters is what the function is. If you want to have the distance traveled by 3 o'clock, that's just the integral from 1 to 3 of v of t dt, or if you prefer, the integral from 1 to 3 of v of s ds. Now, how far have you traveled by time t? Well, I claim that that is the integral from 1 to t of v of s ds. And you can think of that as the reading of a, of a trip odometer at time t if you just reset your trip odometer to start at 1 o'clock. And then your trip odometer just keeps a running total of how far you've gone, and a of t is the reading of your odometer. Now you notice that I wrote v of s ds and not v of t. The reason is this makes sense. I'm adding up all the values of s from 1 to t. If I want to know what is a of 4, I want all the values of s from 1 to 4. If I want a of 7, I want to add up all the values of s from 1 to 7. A lot of people write v of t dt from 1 to t, and that doesn't make any sense. Because if t is 7, then t can't be all the values between 1 and 7. It's just 7. Saying t takes on all the values between 1 and t doesn't make any sense at all. So. The point is when we do this integral, we can call the variable that we're integrating anything we like except t. t is the input for this function. For the integral, it's a particular number, while s is something that takes on a whole bunch of values starting at 1 and running all the way up to t. Now, much of the time, we're not talking about functions of t. We're talking about functions of x. And the usual picture is we say a of x is the integral from a starting point to x of f of s ds. And again, not the integral from a to x of f of x. You can call the variable anything you like except x. And our picture is, here we've got the curve y equals f of s. And a of x is a running total. It's all the area starting at a all the way up to x. So a of 1 is all the area up to here. A of 2 is all the area up to here. A of 3 is all the area up to here. A of 4 is all the area up to here. A of 5 is all the area up to here. It's a running total. Now, if you change your starting point, that basically just adds a constant. So for example, if instead of starting at A, we started at 0, that would just add this much more extra area. It would add a constant to A of x. And we usually do that. We usually take our starting point to be 0, and then we say a of x is the integral from 0 to x of f of s ds. So what's so great about this function? Well, in some sense, it captures all the information about definite integrals. See, integral from a to b of f of x dx, that's a number. That's the amount of area between a and b. a of x is a function. It's a function of x. It's all the area from 0 to x under the function f of s. But I claim if you understand this function, then you can figure out all of the, all of the um, definite integrals you like. Because I claim that the integral from a to b is the accumulation function evaluated at b minus the accumulation function evaluated at a. Because 
the accumulation of function evaluated at B is all of the area up to B. The accumulation function evaluated at A is all of the area up to A. You take the difference, and you've got all of the area from A to B. And that is the integral from A to B of f of s ds. But when going from A to B, it doesn't matter what we call our variable. We could just as well call it x. So the integral from A to B of f of x dx is the accumulation function at B minus the accumulation function at A. If we can get a handle on this accumulation function, we'll be golden for figuring out integrals.